Hey there, Joe Braun here from the DCS Mech Warriors. In this video, we're going to be installing a third servo in our op mode. Uh, this one's going to be specifically a continuous rotation servo, so we'll manage it by power uh, instead of a set position. So let me go ahead and switch over to my screen. And before we get started, what I want to do is go ahead and go down to our YouTube folder where we created that servo number two yesterday. Uh, and then I'm going to right click and copy this and then click on YouTube and right click and paste as soon as I can find it there. And then we want to call this one servo three. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we don't, uh, we can refer back to servo one and servo two op modes. Um, to see where we were when we created those without all the extra stuff. So we're kind of layering these in. Um, so now we have uh, Servo 3 right there. And then what I'm going to do is go up here to uh, our new member training that we use for our junior high class and go ahead and open the continuous rotation servo with buttons. So there's my notes. I'm going to collapse this menu and then I'm going to move this down so that we can see both. Uh, top and bottom here. So the, um, the one that we're working on, the op mode that we're working on is Servo 3 and my notes are the one here in the bottom. So let me scroll up to the top. I'm going to expand the configuration file. I did notice that in a previous video, I was watching it the second time editing it and um, I noticed that the configuration file, you might get a little confused with what I meant there. This right here is basically just tracking what we do in the config configuration file because I change it here doesn't mean that it's actually changed on the robot controller. You still have to go into the configuration file and uh, enter in these particular variable names so that everything matches up. So by adding it here, it's just basically keeping track of what we're planning to do, but you still have to physically go and uh, enter in these variables in the config file on your robot controller. Uh, just as a side note, a couple weeks ago, I did send Rev Robotics a uh, message suggesting that you be able to edit that from your PC when uh, you're connected uh, through the Rev hardware client. We'll see what they um, do with that, but they did say that was an interesting idea and that they'll consider doing it in for next year's um, firmware update. So I'll be interested to see, see what they do with that. But uh, moving on then, um, what we wanna do is go ahead and create here a servo port. Uh, we're going to put this one on two because that's the next one numerically and we're going to call this CR servo um, I missed an E there servo three all right so we've updated what um, needs to be added to our configuration file so uh, disabled we're still going to leave this disabled for my op mode anyway you probably want yours commented out so that it actually works um, we're going to leave our group as examples. Um, our class is already set up. We don't need to change anything. So when we made a copy, it refactored it and called it Servo 3. Um, again, we're layering in what we've done in previous videos. If you want to know how to do Servo 1 and Servo 2, you would go back and watch those uh, particular videos. But we are layering this in, so we're going to leave that right there. So we're going to create some space for our Servo 3 variables. Global variables would be just under the class name, which is where we have ours. And so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to, through the magic of control C and control V, uh, go ahead and paste those in. So again, uh, this is only accessed inside this particular class. Um, the class that we're accessing is uh, CR servo. So continuous rotation servo is what that stands for. And then our variable name for the one that we're creating is CR servo three and lower camel case. Um, like I said, in previous videos, we were running those to position. So when we run this particular servo, we're gonna run it by power. It works a lot like a DC motor. So we're knitting the power instead of the position. And then um, th that's basically the init power. So we want it to be off. And then we're gonna have another variable um, to where we're controlling the speed, whether um, it's going forward or backward, it's actually going at 100%. You can of course adjust this. You can have more than one speed. Um, so you could have several different speeds depending on what you're wanting to do. But uh, for this video, we're just going to set it at 100%. OK, 
Okay, so the next piece um, is our run op mode that we're overriding from our parent class. So um, Servo 3 is inheriting everything from its parent class, uh, linear op mode. And so all of this stays the same. There's nothing we're changing here. These functions that we're calling right here or methods that we're calling, um, all of those are defined a little lower. Um, but we're not changing the overall big picture, so our run op mode still stays the same. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is create a, uh, another piece of hardware for our third servo here, and that's going to go right here, but again, we haven't created that method here for the initial setup of that servo, so we want to come down here and do that first. So we've got servo 1 and servo 2, so we're going to create a um, init method uh, init function just below this for our third servo. So I'm going to control C and control V, um, which is the way we would do this if we were coding it live in class instead of me coming down here and just copying it off my notes. Um, so I'm going to do it the way that we would do it live in an in a actual classroom. So init servo 2 wants to be changed to init servo 3. We haven't used it, so we don't need to refactor. We're just going to change the name. And then we want this to be our variable name that we're calling for this particular servo, which is this one right here. Again, I'm just gonna push Control C and come down and find that and then change all of these servo twos to the correct one. We're also gonna change our um, hardware map, the name that's used in the configuration file. We're gonna change that. Um, and so now I'm getting some errors. It knows that uh, this is a continuous rotation servo. Um, and that's defined right here by the class name and it's saying that this right here is confused. Um, this notation is confusing because we just changed the type of servo that we have. So we should be able to put a CR servo in front right there and it should fix this. Um, we'll see what happens here. So I'm going to um, tab and that fills that in. So now uh, now that we've changed this class name, it's, it's happy with all of that. So the same thing needs to happen down here in these. So I'm gonna double click on servo, and this one is a set position. That's why that one hasn't fixed. We'll come back to that here in just a second. Um, so I wanna come back up to line 68. Our direction for this one, we're actually gonna run this forward. So uh, type four, and then I'm gonna tab and fill that in. And then uh, I think all of that is the same as down here. So now we need to change this to the correct notation also. We're not running to position, we're running to power when you use a control, uh, a continuous rotation servo. So I'm gonna type in power um, and then tab. And then obviously this variable is from servo two, so we don't wanna use that. When we initialize our continuous rotation servo, um, do we want that to be moving? Well, the answer is no. So our init power, um, sometimes we'll call this zero power. Um, you might use zero power instead of init power. Um, actually, let's just go ahead and change that because that would make more sense. We are using it for init, um, but our zero power obviously is zero. And so that's the variable we'll use here. So let me drop down and find that. So we want to set our continuous rotation servo to zero power when it initializes so it doesn't start moving and doing weird things while we're uh, waiting for the game to start, right? So um, what we're gonna do now is take this particular method name and we're gonna come up here and put it in our method stack for our init hardware. So I'm gonna paste that in there. We're gonna add parentheses and our semicolon. And so now we have our third servo, um, all of our initialization setup. We have that added to our init hardware, which then is gonna be called in the big picture when we run our op mode. So that is all set. So the next thing that we wanna do is go ahead and add some functionality to our teleop controls. So I'm gonna find that method in our previous mo um, module here, or op mode, not module. Um, so uh, what we wanna do is just add to this list. We're gonna keep the functionality of servo one, we're gonna keep the functionality of servo two. So I'm gonna add a couple more lines down here and we're gonna to start to code this out um, as far as what we wanted to do. So let me paste this in and we'll talk about it. So this is saying if gamepad one left, uh, the D-pad left or left D-pad is pressed. So this is true, it has been pressed. 
Um, it registers that as true. We want to run this particular line of code if it's true. So the continuous rotation servo, we're going to set its power in a knit. It was zero, but now we're going to set its power to negative one in this instance, because that variable, if we come back up here, is hard coded, not hard coded, but uh, variable coded to be 100% power. So it's gonna turn in the opposite direction, try to find that here, because we have a negative in the front. So to the left is backwards, is what we're saying here, okay? So let me go ahead and just copy this, and I'm gonna push enter. And what if we want it to go to, um, go forward? Well, let's go with D-pad right in that particular instance. So I'm going to type in right and push tab. Um, that didn't work, probably because I didn't delete the left. But we have uh, D-pad right. And we want that to go now in the positive direction. So I'm going to change, uh, get rid of the negative basically to change that to positive. So now we've got left and right, but what if we want to stop it? Um, we don't have that set up. Um, just to keep things in order, um, when I pasted that in there, it did move if um, in, and I don't particularly like that. So I'm going to push um, back tab. Should work. There we go. Um, so uh, let me actually go over that real quick. Let me push control Z um, and control Z one more time. So what I tried doing right there with my keyboard is I pushed backspace and it didn't actually go back a tab, it went back to the previous line. So I pushed enter to see if it would put it in the right spot. It still didn't. So I pushed down shift tab and then it back tabbed. That's how you do a back tab um, and put it in the correct spot there. So uh, that's the way that I want that to be. Um, actually, I in looking at this, I now know why it's messed up. Somehow I deleted out a bracket. So um, this opening bracket doesn't have a closing bracket. It's thinking, well, it's actually confused. This bracket down here, it might think that it's the right one, but it's not. It's got 12 errors over here because of that. So what I want to do is come to this line and actually put an enter, um, and then I'm going to put my ending bracket, and now all those errors go away over here in the right-hand corner, and I've got nothing um, showing up as an error there also. So um, just make sure that you keep your uh, code blocks all straight and organized and those errors usually when a student looks at me and they're like confused about why their code's not working it's usually um, a curly brace somewhere they messed up the curly braces just like i did um, okay so what i'm going to do is go ahead and push enter here and what i want to do is go back to the thought process that i was on before i got distracted there uh, what if we want the servo to stop? Okay, we want it to go to zero power. Well, we need to add some functionality for that. So um, what I did on my notes here is I did deep uh, down D-pad. So let's go ahead and I'm going to copy this and go through the actual changes instead of just pasting it in there. Uh, go through the changes that I would do. So um, let's do D-pad down for stop. And in this instance, we don't want any of this particular variable. We want to set it back to the zero power uh, one that we were using. So I'm going back up. I could actually, let's just do, um, let's type it in rather than copy and paste. So um, the reason that we name our variables the way that they are named um, is so that we can um, basically type um continuous rotation servo three, and then we get all the options here at the end. So let me go back up here, make a little more sense maybe. So uh, servo one. So if we wanna do something with servo one, we type servo one and then the menu will pop up and then we choose what we're wanting to do. So in this case, I would get a net power, um, position one, position two. So let me come back down here and use that as an example. So if I was wanting to do something with servo one, um, I can start to start to type servo one. And then now I've got a delay, I've got a knit position. So we put what the uh, piece of hardware is first in our variable names, and then we put what we're wanting to actually do with it. So we've got some method calls here. We've got variable names here. Um, it basically lists everything out. That's the reason we do our naming scheme the way that it is. So in this particular case, our piece of hardware is uh, continuous rotation and then servo and since it's the only uh, continuous rotation one we have, we don't have a very long list, but I'm wanting to go to zero power. Um, so now I can push tab or enter in that case, and that'll fill that in. 
Okay, so that's the reason our variables are named the way they are. And now we have the three pieces to actually run this servo. Um, the only th other thing that I would want to do is come down here to the telemetry and maybe output something to the screen. So um, we're done with servo two. So I'm going to highlight this on my keyboard. I'm going to press control forward slash and it'll comment it out. Again, we don't want to delete that because uh, if we want to come back and add the functionality back in, we would have to retype it, make all the edit um, edit changes, even if we copied and paste, and it would take longer. Um, we can just simply highlight this, push control forward slash, and turn it back on, upload the code, and it'd be ready to go. So um, that's the reason we don't delete it. Um, but let me go ahead and add our functionality now for servo three, our continuous rotation servo. So um, on this, on my notes here, I have servo three power because we're not running it to position. We want to actually get the power. So that would be the um, servo itself, the variable we're using for that servo dot get power. Um, and then this one right here, um, servo three direction um, is telling us whether it's going backwards or forwards. We'd be able to maybe use that for troubleshooting um, if it's rotating in the wrong direction. Um, it would output that to the screen and we'd be, um, basically have some feedback for that. So those are two pieces that we might want to add. So in this case, I'm just going to copy my notes here and paste that in. Um, and now we've altered um, that uh, telemetry that's showing up. We didn't change anything up here in the big picture. Uh, we still have our telemetry being called on, in our while loops, um, but we're changing what's actually inside that method. And then if we want to add functionality back in, again, all we have to do is uncomment it and turn it back on. So we could do all three servos if we want. So let me comment that back out. I think that's everything we need to cover in this particular video. We've covered a lot of terms in previous videos. So this one's actually pretty short in comparison. Yep, looks like everything that we wanted to do in this one. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and close it out. I will tell you that our next video will be a continuous rotation with the joystick, so something very similar for Servo 4. If you have any questions about this video, go ahead and throw those down in the comments, and we hope to see you in the next video. Catch you later. Bye-bye.